Good morning, everyone. I think our guitar is <coughs> muted here. There we go. All right, let's all stand. We're going to sing this morning. This is Hallelujah. Lord, we sing your praises loud. Sing them to the stumbling crowd. Sing of Jesus and his word. Sing until the earth has heard. Judgment scene of grace Sing until we see his face Hallelujah Hallelujah God is why we live and sing We the service he the King, all his power, all his life, living in the church is why.
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If everybody could, hold your hand up for me real quick. I've got to get a count because where there are two or more gathered, God is there with us, right? So let's see. Okay, I think we have more than two. Um, we just want to welcome everybody. There, There's definitely a lot of Biblical scriptures, of course they're biblical scriptures, right? That's the ones we go by. Um, about God being in our presence. And so we want to look at one of those scriptures today. All right, Mark 9, verse 33. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, were, what were you arguing, arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. If I could get any of the little kids to stand up. Any little kids in the audience, stand up. Welcome, welcome. All the adults, if you'll stand up, welcome the kids, welcome the person next to you. <laughs> by, by welcoming each other and having this heart of like servant leadership and just really making sure that we are taking care of each other and welcoming each other, 
we welcome God into our presence. So that's what we want to strive for today. We want to welcome all of you to the Heartland Church. We've got some great worship coming up. We've got a great message. We're going to take communion with each other. We're just going to have a great service today. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to welcome you, uh, to be with you, to serve you, Lord, and to just learn more about you, to be with the body of Christ, and to be with our friends and our family, Lord. We want to welcome everybody that's here in person and joining us online today, and no matter how they're here, we pray that the message will be spread across the globe uh, through all the mediums that we're using, and we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, Win My Love to Christ Grow. When my love to Christ rose weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to Bible to Luke chapter 22. So we are supposed to be different. And today, as we talk about the offering, I want to talk about a little bit about being different. Do it, Brandon. This is one of the examples the world sees and people want to be like. Look at that. He's smart, rich. And he's giving all that money. Anyone who wants to accept some for me on my behalf, let me know. I'll take it. But this is the ideal the world thinks of. I want to compare that to Luke chapter 22 and verse 24. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom. 
just as my father conferred on me. And eventually, they conferred on us. And this is the tradition of Jesus saying, look at the world. This is what they do, right? But you, you're to be like one who serves. An offering is a chance to serve. It's a chance where you can be more important to God than Elon Musk. Because I honestly think Jesus looks at our hearts and it makes this, it brings about such great joy when he sees people give because they want to give. Right? It doesn't matter what you have. It's the heart to give and the heart to serve. And we get to continue this tradition today. Something that Jesus started over 2,000 years ago. And it's an amazing tradition. So, um, if you want to give, we have um, uh, some urns back there you can put your offering or you can give online. Um, I also want to mention that um, if you still have yet to give your special contribution from last week, you can still do so. Just make sure when you give it, you mark it as special. And with that, let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this chance to just remember that you are God and that you give us so much. Father, from the day we are born until the day we die, everything we have is ultimately from you. Uh, we are just tiny, tiny, insignificant little things, Father. But you look at our gifts as something huge. And I pray that as we give today, you help us give with a happy, joyful, and sincere heart. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to sing one more song before our sermon this morning. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. I saved a part of me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home. Heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs are sweet. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. seated.
Welcome once again to Heartland Church. It is good to be here. Amen. As Jesus' disciples once said to him when they were on the mountaintop. Uh, but we're going to have a good time this morning and uh, definitely want to welcome you and uh, welcome everyone watching online. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a mini series here, which we'll get into in a minute. But before that, I wanted to give you guys an update on our special missions offering. So once a year, we take up a special missions offering that we just give away to other churches that need it, to churches in Eurasia. Uh, this year, we gave some to Hope for India as well, just with everything that they're going through with the pandemic. And uh, our goal this year as a church was to raise $25,000. And, uh, you know, when you put a goal out there, you never know. It's a goal. So we, we hope that we can get to that point. Uh, but as of right now, what we've collected for our special missions offering, $26,149.02. And we have another 3900 in pledges that people are still pledging to give. So uh, God has just blown out our goal and blessed our missions offering. Um, I did want to give a special welcome this morning to a brother that just moved here uh, from our church in, our sister church in Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, Jim Kennan, stand up there, Jim. So some of you guys know uh, Steve Hiddleston. Uh, he's been out there with Steve and uh, Al Baird and some of those guys. And so we're super excited to have you here, Jim, and look forward to getting to know you. Uh, Jim is a, a great man. We got to hang out yesterday and uh, talked on the phone some. And Anyway, good to have you here. Um, I did want to ask you guys, there's a special prayer request. Um, a friend of mine, her name is Brenda, and she watches our, our Facebook Live services every week. And uh, she actually worked with my dad back in St. Louis, and that's how I got to know Brenda. But uh, she watches every week, but Brenda recently had a heart attack. And uh, so I saw she's on this morning, uh, maybe from the hospital or from her home, but uh, she's recovering. They've, they've done some things, some stints and whatnot. Uh, but if you could please pray for Brenda and just that she can make a full recovery. And uh, we love you, Brenda, and, and hope to see you back on your feet soon. But um, anyway, moving on here, uh, we're doing this three-week miniseries called How to Have It All. How to Have It All. Do you want to have it all? We do, right? I mean, in a, in a manner of speaking, we want to have it all, right? What does it mean to have it all? And I think you've got to ask yourself, what's really important to me? In, in my mind, in my life, what does it mean to have it all? And last week, we talked about how to get rich, all right? And if you didn't get to hear that lesson, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that lesson. Because if you want to be rich, you've got to learn that lesson, right? And really, the, the key to getting rich is to be generous, to be rich towards God, and then God will make us rich in many different ways. Amen? But today, we're going to be talking about how to have great success. How to have great success. Do you want to have great success in your life? I do, right? I, I think everybody wants to be successful. And think about this. No one sets out to fail at something, right? Have you ever started something and your goal was to fail? No, I mean, that's ridiculous, right? Um, nobody says, man, I just want to be the worst at, at this thing that I'm going to do, right? No one says that. No one wants to flunk out of school. No one wants to get fired from their job. No one wants to have failed relationships. No one wants to be a bad parent. No one wants to struggle in your marriage, right? We want to have success in everything that we set our hand to do. So how can we have great success? Today we're going to talk about Three keys to success, okay? Three keys to success. Now, what if I told you that I know how you can have success in every area of your life? It will take almost no effort. You can do whatever you want, and it will be really easy to achieve. You don't believe me? Good. <laughs> yeah, it, I'd be lying if I told you that, right? If anyone tells you that, do not walk away from that person. Run away from that person because they do not have your best interest at heart because you, ha you cannot just do whatever you want. You cannot do no effort. You cannot just have really easy success in life. And so we're going to talk about three keys to being successful. But there's no easy way to be successful. And in our culture, our society today, we want the easy way, right? I mean, we just, we want things to come easy. We want there to be minimal effort. 
We, if, we're, if we need to lose some weight, we want to take a pill for that, right? If we want some food cooked, we put it in the microwave, right? We want it right now. If we want to, we don't want to exercise to get in shape. We just want to get in shape, right? Um, and so I thought of some different things in our society, and I think it just kind of reflects where we're at of, of wanting things right now. But minute rice. Anybody use minute rice? Right? I, you know, I don't have time to wait five minutes for my rice. I need minute rice. I need my rice now. And actually, I'm surprised that no one has come out with 30-second rice, right? I mean, minute rice has been around for a while. We need some 30-second rice. In fact, if we can come up with that, we could be millionaires, right? We could all go in together. We come up with 30-second rice, and we blow these guys out of the water. I, I say we do it. Uh, what about this one? Carnation Instant Breakfast. Remember that? You remember their slogan? They had a little slogan that they would do. What was it? Anybody remember? You're going to love it in an instant, right? It's all about right now. Was that, was that Lori? All about right now. I need my breakfast now. I don't have time to cook my breakfast. I need instant breakfast right now. What about this one? Jiffy Pop, right? Not taking slow pop. Not taking even minute pop. I want Jiffy Pop, right? I need my popcorn now or... Jiffy Lube, right? I need my oil change now, right? Heath, I mean, I, I can't wait on you. I need Jiffy Lube. I want my oil change, and I need it done now. And then, if that wasn't all enough, right? Those things have been around for a few years, but, but now, if, check this out. You may not know this, but you can actually order stuff, and it shows up at your house the next day. Can you believe that? It's amazing, right? You remember the Jetsons? They had a thing where they could push, push an order in, and it would show up at their house. And I remember watching that as a kid thinking, that's never going to happen. Like, stuff won't just show up. How, how could they do that, right? That's magic. They can't just make stuff show up at your house. But we have it. We have stuff that will show up at our house because we don't have time to go pick it up. And, you know, you see the, the robot maid there? That's another one you thought, we're never going to have that, right? We're not going to have robot maids. We got Roombas. We, we have little vacuum cleaners that do it on their own. You don't even have to vacuum your house because we want convenience. And then finally, Instagram, right? I don't know about you. I want my grams now, right? I need Instagrams. I'm not waiting for grams. I don't want minute grams. I don't want next hour grams. I want Instagrams, right? But, but there's just this feeling in our society, we, we got to have it and we got to have it now. You know, one of the reasons I think there's so much debt out there is because we, we don't want to wait to save up and buy something. We just want to buy it now. I'll just pay for it later, but I want it now. We've been conditioned to get things right now with the least amount of effort. You know, my son, he's uh, visiting a friend, his best friend's graduating this weekend, so he's up in Kansas City, but he is a master at figuring out the easiest way to get something done. Like, if you have a problem and you're like, I'm not sure how I'm going to get this done, talk to JT because he will figure it out for you. Uh, when he was doing robotics, he would always be thinking about, well, what if we did this? What if we did this? So they actually gave him an award called, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it award. Because he was just always thinking about how to make it better and easier, and, and he's good at that. Um, but, but let me ask you, do you want to have success? We do, right? But, but we understand that success is not going to come easy. It's not just going to come overnight. We are going to have to do some things. So we're talking about those three keys to success. Key number one, hard work. Hard work. I see Kevin Tolley back there shaking his head. He's like, he didn't get, get ripped like that from nothing, man. You don't just lift 500 pounds overnight without putting in hard work, right? Proverbs 6. Turn with me to Proverbs 6. I'm going to talk about hard work. Proverbs 6 and verse 6 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Man, here God talks a little bit about hard work. And he says, go to the ant. 
go look at an ant. You ever just stop and look at an ant? I mean, we used to because we used to get them with the magnifying glass in the sun. We try to, <laughs> that's another story. Um, he says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. And so, you know, you get this picture here of a slug, a sluggard, and an ant, right? And, and God says, look at the, don't look at the, don't be a sluggard. Look at the ant. Consider its ways. Have you ever just stopped to consider an ant? Just take an afternoon sometime and just think about ants. Maybe don't do that, but, but take a few minutes, right? And, and just consider the ant. It says, he has no commander. The ant doesn't need someone constantly riding him saying, hey, you better get your stuff done. Hey, you better get your stuff done. Hey, you better get ready. The winter's coming. It doesn't have a commander, an overseer, a ruler. Yet, it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at the harvest. The ant knows what to do. The ant's like, okay, I want to eat. I know I'm going to need some food this winter, so I'm going to go get the food. I'm going to store it away, and when, when winter comes, I'm good to go. The ant knows what to do, and, and I think sometimes when it comes to success, there may be some other things out there that we need to learn, but, but we really know what to do. We know we got to work hard, right? If you're in school, if you want to get good grades, what do you do? You work hard, right? Now, you might need some tutoring, you might need some help, you know, picking your classes or whatever, but, but I guarantee you if you work hard, you will do better than if you do not work hard, students, right? <laughs> if you have a job and you want to do well at your job, work hard. Put in hard work when you're at your job, right? If you don't work hard, you will not do as well at your job. It's, this is basic. This is so, like, just the natural order of things is we have to work hard. And God asked this question. He says, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? You ever find yourself just in that place where you're just like, man, I know I need to get these things done, but I just don't want to do it. And we put it off, and we're just kind of laying there waiting. Maybe, maybe I'll wake up tomorrow, and all the stuff will be done, right? And all my troubles will be gone. And, and uh, don't get me wrong. I, th this is not saying we don't need breaks and we don't need rest, right? We, that's another sermon. We've talked about that as well. But but man, there are times when we just need to work hard. He says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you. Man, if we don't work hard, there's a price that we will pay. You will wake up one morning, you'll be like, man, how did I get here? How, how, you know, sometimes you feel like, man, why is this guy doing so well, and this woman's doing so well, and everybody's growing in their faith, and they're growing in these different areas, and it's like, well, did you have a quiet time recently? Well, no, I didn't, I didn't really do that, you know. And, and we'll just wake up and we'll be like, man, how did I get in poverty? Whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically, whether whatever area of life that we find ourselves in poverty, it didn't just happen overnight. It's because we didn't sometimes put in the hard work. There's no easy route to success. And so God says, consider the ant, you sluggard. So he's calling us a sluggard if we're not working hard, and he says, look at the ant, and so I, I looked up some facts about ants, okay? I didn't look up a lot of facts about slugs, but I mean, you know slugs, right? They're just slimy, and they, they just kind of ooze along, and if you look, they leave a trail of slime behind them, right? I don't want to be a slug. I don't want a trail of slime behind me in life, right? But that's the sluggard, but, but listen to this about the ant. An ant can lift 20 times its own body weight. In fact, if a second grader was as strong as an ant, they would be able to pick up a car. All right? Any second graders in here? Got any second graders? Ian, can you lift a car? No. Okay, you need to start working out. Talk to Kevin. All right? 20 times its own weight. Man, an ant is strong. God's saying, spiritually speaking, we need to be strong. We need to be like the ant. Lift our own weight. Times 20. Some queen ants, listen to this, they can live for many years and have millions of babies that's quite a mom right anybody any moms in here have millions of babies <laughs> right I know we got some new moms I know we got some moms on the way over here and and but tw uh, uh, millions of babies can you imagine the diaper bill that those queen ants have to pay for those I mean it's crazy right listen to this when an ant fights it usually fights to the death okay when an ant goes in, 
they're going all in, right? There's no return for an ant when they go in. If you ever see two ants fighting, you might want to break them up because one of them's going to die, right? They go to the death. Man, is that our mindset when it comes to especially spiritual things? Man, I'm going all in. I'm throwing it all in there. I'm not holding back. When foraging, ants leave a pheromone trail so that they can know where they've been. Kind of like Hansel and Gretel. Remember, they left the breadcrumbs so they'd know how to get back. But ants are even better. They don't leave bread that something's going to eat. They leave this trail of their own scent so they know where they've been. They work smart. Ants don't work foolishly. They want to know, okay, i got to get back to where I went, so I'm going to know exactly where I came from so I can get back there. Queen ants have wings, and what they do is when they start a new nest, they will shed their wings, okay? So they only have wings when they need to go and start a new nest, and the queen ant, see what she does? She lets go of whatever would hold her back. She's got some baggage on her, some wings that she needed to get to this point, but now she's like, I don't need that anymore. It's gone, so she can be more efficient. And finally, ants don't have lungs. I don't know if you knew that. Oxygen enters through tiny holes all over their body, and carbon dioxide leaves through the same holes. They don't have lungs. And what it shows us is that ants are built for efficiency. They're built to be efficient. They don't want extra things in their life, extra things holding them back. I mean, they didn't decide that. God decided that. But, but they don't have lungs because they don't need them. And, and sometimes maybe there's things that we don't need in our life, and we just got to say, you know what? I don't need that. I need to be built for efficiency. God says we need to consider the ant. Proverbs 14, 23 says, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Brothers and sisters, let's don't be the people that just have mere talk. We talk about doing things for God. We talk about loving one another. We talk about taking care of our family. Let's, let's put in hard work, and let's see how God can bless that hard work. Amen? That's key number one is hard work. Key number two, priorities. If you want to be successful, you have to have priorities, okay? So we're going to look in Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Key number two to have great success, priorities. It says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. You ever worry about these things? Just the, the basics of life, you know, where's the next meal coming from, or what am I going to wear, what am I gonna, where am I going to live, you know, how am I going to pay the bills, and you know, these are some pretty basic needs, and, and I think for a lot of us, we don't necessarily worry every day about where our next meal is coming from, although maybe, maybe you do. We don't necessarily worry about the clothes on our back, right? We have clothes, but what are the things in life that we're tempted to worry about? Financial things, health things relational things, kids. I mean, there, there's all these things. And the point of this passage is not one specific thing. It's, it's whatever's on your plate, whatever's in your life that you're tempted to worry about. And Jesus knows. He knows that we're going to be tempted to get our priorities out of whack. And so he gives us what we need. He gives us the key to make sure that we get things in the right order. And, and what he says next here in this passage is the key. But seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Look what he says here. He says, seek first whose kingdom? His kingdom. Not your kingdom. 
Not the kingdom that the world wants you to seek. Not any other kingdom. But he says, seek first his kingdom. You know, right before this, Jesus talked about all these other things that we seek after. All these other things that we get wrapped up in worrying about and and focused on. And he says, okay, those things are important. God knows that you need those. God's going to take care of that. But he says, you seek first his kingdom. Ask yourself this morning, is God and his kingdom your first priority? So we know the right answer, right? Oh, Oh, yeah, God's number one. But in our lives, is God first? Is God's kingdom what we're seeking first in your free time? You know, Jesus doesn't say just seek God in your free time. He says seek him first. Jesus didn't say if you get around to it, seek after God a little bit. You know, give him, give him an hour here on Sunday morning. You know, give him, give him a few minutes here and there. Jesus didn't say, hey, after you get all these other things done in your life, those, those things he just listed, after you get all that done, then seek God. No, he says you've got to seek God first. You ever seek after something that you really wanted or you really desired? You ever have that in your life? And you know how that is when you really want something, right? And, and so I wanted to share a, a little story here. Uh, this is me in fifth grade. Okay, I'm the guy holding the trophy there on your right. Okay, fifth grade there. The names are blocked out for your safety of all those other kids. But um, this was a, a math contest that we entered. Okay, now I was not as gifted as Josh in math. Right, I wasn't in mathnastics or mathematics or whatever kind of math things that he did. Um, what were you? Math? What were you? Yeah, he was in some kind of weird math thing. I, I wasn't that into it, right? In fact, this is probably as far as I went in math. It was right here. But I was part of the team that won the district high school math tournament in the fifth grade, okay? And that's pretty much where my math skills led off. But that's me in fifth grade. And the reason I'm sh- showing you this picture, just so you can kind of get a visual of who, what I look like in fifth grade. But, but I want to get really vulnerable for a minute, okay? Can I get vulnerable with you guys? This is stuff that most people, I probably have never shared this maybe with one other person, maybe two. So now we're going to just put it on the internet for the whole world to know. But um, get vulnerable here for a minute. So when I was about, from about the fourth through the eighth grade, okay, every year I would get a crush on a girl, okay? And every year it was a different girl. But I was loyal to that one crush for that year, okay? So I don't know how that happened. It wasn't like I planned that, but I just remember, I look back on it, I'm like, huh, every year I had a crush, and it was a different girl each year, you know? And, and, um, but I'd have this crush for the entire year, and that was it. That's who I liked. If you'd have said, what about her? Nope, nope, I like her, you know? And that was my crush for the year. And um, not going to name any of their names in case any of them watch this, but, um, but I would go out of my way just to see them. Just to like, if I knew they were walking down this hall at school and I could walk down that hall, I would go way out of the way to just see my crush for, for a glimpse, right? That's all I needed to do. Um, so in fifth grade, I got this job. Fifth grade was, you know, the top of the school there. And I got the job of delivering the newspaper to every classroom every day. So I'd get to get a stack of newspapers, walk around, lay them down by the door. And so the, my crush that year, I knew what classroom she was in. And Man, it was, I think that's why I took that job. It was so awesome because I get to walk by that door every day and I'd kind of lay the paper down real slow, you know, kind of look in the room. And, um, teacher probably thought, what's that kid doing, you know? And sometimes the door would be shut and I'd just have a bad day, man. I'm like, boom, they shut the door. I can't even see her today. And, um, but that girl, like, I, I knew where she lived as well and we passed her neighborhood on the way to church. And so we'd go by this subdivision, and her house, you could see it. It was about a quarter mile away from the highway where we were driving. But every time we'd go by there, I'd be like, we'll see if maybe, she, maybe she'll be outside, you know. And I think there was like two times all year that she was outside. But, but because we passed her house, I saw, oh, that's the car they drive. And it was kind of a unique car. It was this old Dodge. And, and any time I saw that car around town or a car that looked like that, I was like, you know. Maybe she's in the back seat, right? I think I got whiplash a few times. But... But that was my fifth grade crush. Man, I was seeking after her. Sixth grade 
it was not a great year. I had a different crush that year, and that girl, we had one class together, and that was like all I ever saw her. So that, that was a rough year for my crush, okay? Um, and I'm almost positive she has no idea I existed. Seventh grade, I had a new crush, all right? Now, this girl, I mean, she was awesome, right? And I would ride my bike through the neighborhood where she lived. This was like a mile or two from my house, but I would find an excuse. Say, oh, I'm going to visit Jimmy over there, you know, whatever, and, and go over there. And I would just ride down her street just hoping maybe she'd walk outside or maybe she'd be riding her bike. I don't think I ever saw her. I wasn't stalking, okay? I wasn't, like, looking in her house or anything. But I would just ride by hoping to catch a glimpse of this girl. Now, I'm pretty sure most of these girls don't know that I had a crush on them. And pr most of them probably do not know I existed. But, but, man, for me, I was seeking after them, right? In my middle school mind, I was seeking them. I went out of my way to bump into them. Out of my way just to catch a glimpse of a girl that didn't even know I existed. But what about you and God? Are you seeking after God? Is that our heart in our relationship with God? Man, I'll go out of my way. I will go across town. I'll go wherever I need to go just to get a glimpse of God, just to spend some time with him. You know, the difference between a, a middle school crush and God, there's a lot of differences, okay, but one, one, one big difference is that when it comes to seeking God, God wants a relationship with you. And in fact, he's seeking you. Every day, God's like, oh, am I going to get a glimpse of Daryl today? Oh, there he is. He showed up. Oh, where's Nolan? Man, I'm, I'm looking for Nolan. I'm going to go by his house. Oh, there's his car. Am I going to get to see Nolan today? God is seeking after you, wants a relationship with you. Are you seeking after God? Is that your first priority? And so what does it look like in our lives to seek first? his kingdom, and his righteousness. What does that mean? What does that even look like to do that? And I thought of a few things here that can help us just have some practicals on and how do I really seek after God? Number one is just time with God. Are you reading the word every day? You know, the world is constantly trying to pull you away from God. There will always be something else that comes along, some other thing in your life that's trying to pull you away from God. Our convictions are constantly being tested. You know, every day there's some new thing that, that just tests our convictions in life. Tests our convictions. Man, am I going to hold to God's word or am I just going to go with the latest, greatest fad? Every day we face temptation. Every day we're tempted to water down the standard that Jesus set. Tempted just to blend in. Well, I don't want to really stand out. You know, I don't want to be weird. I don't want to be a Jesus freak, whatever, you know. And we, we can get tempted just to blend in to the world. It's easy to get comfortable. You know, especially, I think, in, in northwest Arkansas, here in the Bible Belt, there's, there's a lot of believers, right? There's a lot of people that go to church that, that have a faith in God that really believe it. But, but there's also maybe a lot of people that don't really put it into practice, Right? And, and this is not about judging anybody else. This is about us. Are, are we just getting comfortable because we're surrounded by people? It's, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. But are we really living it? Easy to get comfortable in our Christianity. And, you know, when I look at Jesus, Jesus was not comfortable. The second thing here on seeking God is just prayer. Are you talking to God every day? Are you talking to God throughout your day? Do, do you realize, do you think about, man, God is right here. Every time I hit a bump, every day when I hit a roadblock, God is right here with me. Are you taking time? Just, it could just be a minute. You know, in the middle of your day, something happens. Okay, I just need a minute. God, I know you're right here. I know you're seeking me. I'm seeking you. Help me out. You know, you're just, just praying to God when you can. It's easy to take our prayer life for granted. It is. It's easy just to, maybe we get in a rut with it, maybe we just, we're just not doing it much, or we kind of do the, the bedtime prayers, but, but that's about it. You cannot live like Jesus and not be devoted in prayer. And then the third thing here is, is how to seek God, is, is time with the body of Christ, right? Um, I think this morning was it Brandon shared about where there are two or more gathered, there I am also, right? God is right here, right now. 
We got to be with the body of Christ, right? We got to be together. And maybe we can't always be together with everybody, right? But we can be together in our small groups, be together with other people from the body of Christ, right? And, and you know, with, with COVID, man, it's, it's hard sometimes, right? This past year, it's been hard. There was a time when we weren't, none of us were meeting, right? And then we got online, and then we kind of started coming back, and I know we're coming back more and more. And, and listen, this is not about wherever you're at is where you're at, okay? And I know we still have people watching online. Amen. You're here. You're with the body of Christ online. But, guys, it's time to, to get connected. Get involved in the church. You know, if you want to be involved in our kids' classes, we're going to be starting to get kids' classes going here before long. Talk to the Albrights. They're looking for people that want to get in there with our kids. Our kids have had a rough year, too. They need Jesus. Maybe you want to get involved with the cleaning crew here at the church. You know, there's a lot of us here, which is awesome. That means we leave a lot more mess, right? And so uh, Carolyn is, is in charge of our cleaning crew. If you want to help out with that, talk to her. If you're like, I don't know what to do to, to help and serve the body of Christ, go talk to Carolyn. She will set you up for success. Maybe you want to help with ushering, right? We have our ushers that greet us when we come in and, and make sure that we get communion cups and things like that. Talk to Jim Scott. Maybe you want to mentor a team or a preteen. There's a lot of wisdom in this room. we got a lot of kids coming up. There's about 40 kids in the church. They need mentors. They need men and women of God that will get together once or twice a month, have a quiet time with them, talk to them, just be there in their lives. If you want to do that, talk to us or talk to the Manamans. You can share your faith. Just talk to those around you about Jesus. Invite your friends to come here. Invite your friends to study the Bible. You want to be involved in the lawn crew, in our maintenance crew. Talk to Dave Lond again. You know, we've got some brothers that come up. Vince comes up every week and mows the grass, right? Um, we got brothers that are doing things like that. If you want to be involved in that, talk to those guys. Get involved. Uh, we have our benevolence committee that we're forming. Uh, if you're interested in serving on the benevolence committee, talk to me or talk to one of our board members, and you can serve in that way. Maybe you want to step up and lead a small group, right? As the church continues to grow, we need more and more people to learn how to lead a small group. Step up and do these things. But any of these things can help you to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And, you know, I would say this, because I, I know we all have a lot going on, right? And, and th there are real things that we have to take care of. But, but if we're too busy to do anything for the kingdom of God, can we really say that we're seeking first his kingdom? You know, if that's the case... In our lives, it sounds like we're seeking some other kingdom first, but not his kingdom. And, and this doesn't make us feel guilty. This is like, okay, hey, let me get back in it. Let me snap out of whatever the world's got me into and seek first his kingdom. Amen? So if you want to have great success, first, you got to work hard, right? Don't cut corners. Put in the work. Second, you got to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The third thing, well, what, what if we don't want to do this, Right? I mean, I want to come to church, you know, I want to be a good Christian, you know, but, but man, this is inconvenient, I'm too busy, you know, isn't there just some other way that we can, we can just, you know, do it, and can I just take Christianity light, you know, I don't want the heavy stuff, you know, I'm not going to be as involved as Boo, but, you know, but I want Christianity light, I just want to kind of check in every now and then, right, well, what does Jesus say about that, let's see. And this is the final thing, is consider your options, all right? We've got to work hard, we've got to have our priorities, and we've got to consider our options. Matthew 16, 24 through 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. So what does Jesus say here? He says, hey, if anybody wants to be my disciple, if you want to be a Christian, just go on about your life like everyone else in the world. Is that what he said? Take it easy. Man, I'll, I'll see you in heaven. You know, it'll be great. Just do whatever you want. You're good. No. In fact, Jesus sets a pretty high standard. 
this standard of self-denial. What is self-denial? It means I don't really feel like doing something, but I know I need to do it. I know God has told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to deny myself and obey God. Or the concept of carrying your cross, right? Doesn't mean wearing a necklace with a cross on it. You can do that if you want. Nothing's wrong with that. But, but man, what did Jesus do when he carried his cross? He was literally laying his life down for you. He says, you got to deny yourself. You got to carry your cross. That does not go along with, it's going to be easy, right? But he says, hey, if you want to save, if, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. If you want to hold on to the world and you want to hold on to, to living like the rest of the world lives, he says, you will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. You know, think about it. When, when you're really connected with God, when you have a great prayer life, when you're really getting in God's word, when you're connected in the body of Christ, man, life is good. Things go like they're supposed to go, right? That's what he says. You will find your life. He, he goes, you don't even have any idea of what I have in store for you unless you're really denying yourself and carrying your cross. And then he says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Jesus makes it pretty plain here about how to be successful. He says, you can have it all. You can gain the whole world. Anybody here gain the whole world? I haven't, right? <laughs> I haven't even gained maybe a billionth of the world, right? Uh, who knows? But, but, man, the world says, hey, chase after this. You can have it all. You can gain it all. And Jesus says, what good is it to do all that, to get the career accolades, to get the, the degrees and all those things? And, again, those things aren't bad. It's not wrong to be successful. But if that's what we're chasing after, he says, what good is it to gain all of that and forfeit your soul? You know, most of us will not gain the whole world in this life. You can chase after it. You can put all your time and effort into gaining whatever you think is the whole world for you. Put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. But those are things that don't really matter. So, I've got a little illustration here, but I need a volunteer. Um, I need a young volunteer. So, any young volunteers? Anybody? Anybody? All right, McKenna, come on up. All right. Let's welcome McKenna Albright. Just stand right here for me. All right, now, we're looking at what good is it to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit your soul, right? So I have in my hand here a really nice nickel, okay? Now, if you want, I will give you this nickel. You can have it. No strings attached. You just have it right now. You can go back and sit down. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to work hard. Okay? So, I'm going to ju just hold it for me. You, you didn't agree to it yet. You're just holding it. Okay? Or, I have a $10 bill. Okay? Now, if you want this $10 bill, you're going to have to work for it. It's going to be hard work, right? You're going to have to do whatever I ask you to do. Okay? And it's going to take a little longer than the nickel, but it's your choice of what you can have. Would you like the nickel or the $10 bill? You sure? You're gonna have to work for it. You gotta listen to what I say. Okay, give me the nickel back. Okay, uh, I need you to do a couple push-ups for me. Can you do some push-ups? <clears throat> Let's keep going as long as you can, as long as you can. <clears throat> This is like way better than Josh. <laughs> all right, all right, that's good, that's good. You, now, can you do, you know what jumping jacks are? Can you do some jumping jacks? All right, that's great. Now, say, my mom and dad are awesome. My mom and dad are awesome. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really put her to the test here. Now say, my brothers are awesome. My brothers are awesome. Wow. <laughs> Say that one again. My brothers are awesome. All right. You've just earned yourself $10 and the nickel. You get to keep the nickel as well. Good job.
So here's the thing. Some of us in life are working for that nickel. We put all our time in it. We think that nickel is what's going to make me happy. That nickel, man, if I can get that nickel, you know, that's going to be easier, right? I'm just going to take that nickel and I'm going to go sit down. And God says, man, I've got something so much better in store for you. Something so much better. We, we act like the world is going to give us $9.99, right? And it's not. You're not going to get $10 from the world. You're not going to get, you can't have it all and get it from the world. And some of us, you know, we're, we're working so hard for these earthly gains, and at the end of your life, it won't be worth a nickel. I would say, ask yourself this morning, is my focus on God? Is my focus on working hard, seeking his kingdom first, getting my priorities in line? You know, at the end of that passage that we just read, Jesus said, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Man, God has so much in store for us, guys. And the world is, is just dangling this nickel in front of us, and we keep falling for the nickel. We keep, we're like, $10, I want the nickel. You know, we, we have some amazing nurses in our church, amen? These, these uh, ladies work hard and uh, other medical professionals as well, but, uh, you know, they hear these deathbed um, regrets at times, right? Maybe not so all the nurses, but nurses that work in, in units where people are dying, they're on their deathbed, and they hear these, these things that people say at the end of their life, and some of the things that they overhear, you know, that people wish they'd spent more time with their loved ones. People wish they'd work less. You know, they spent so much time focused on their career, and, and on their deathbed, they're like, ah, that doesn't really matter right now. They wish they'd been more honest. They wish they'd been more of what God wanted them to be. You know what's not often heard on someone's deathbed? Well, if only I'd gotten that one more promotion, things would be better now. Well, if only I had one more degree or one more title in life, well, if only my house was bigger or I had a nicer car. You know, it's so easy to get focused on the wrong things. Things that have some importance, but they're just not that important. Jesus said, what good is it to gain the whole world and yet forfeit your soul? What is your soul worth? It's worth Jesus dying for you. Your, your soul to God is the most precious thing. He's like, I will send my son. I will send him to die because I want to save your soul. Brothers and sisters, don't squander what Jesus died for. As we wrap it up here, we're talking about how to have great success. What's it going to take to have great success? Well, it's going to take hard work. It's not easy. It will take effort. Consider the ant and don't be a sluggard. You got to seek first his kingdom. You got to get your priorities in line. God will provide for your needs. We're, we're not going hungry. We're, we've got roofs over our heads, right? God is going to provide for all of our needs, but you must first, you must seek first his kingdom. And then finally, consider the alternative. Is there really any better life than what God has laid out for you? Are you going to achieve more than what God can give you if you follow his plan? Your heavenly father loves you. Do you guys believe that? Do you really believe, man, God loves me? He wants you to have great success, but according to his definition of great success. And he really knows what matters, right? Only God really knows what a successful life for you will look like. Brothers and sisters, let us enjoy all of the success that God gives us as we seek first his kingdom and to him be the glory. Thank you. Oh, and I'm going to need that $10 back, McKenna. No. It's yours. Amen. Uh, with that, we are now going to uh, take communion together. So I'm going to pray, and then we can take the bread and cup. Uh, Heavenly Father.
we're just so grateful for you sending your son uh, to, to be willing to go through what he did to, to bear that cross for us. Uh, and amen, that, that we're called higher by what he's done. But Father, we want to fix our eyes upon him right now. And just remember and consider what it means that he was willing to, to die for me. That he was willing to die for everyone here. That he was willing to, to go through whatever it took to get us to be able to be with you. Uh, so, Father, just, just help us to, to really draw close to Jesus in our hearts uh, and remember everything about what, what he has truly done to love us. We love you. Probably in your son's name. Amen. Okay, good morning everyone. We have a few announcements today and unfortunately due to an error in my own head, <laughs> we don't have them in paper, but we'll have them sent out through email after service today. So um, there's a few really cool things coming up, so make sure to take note. Um, this Wednesday we're going to have our congregational midweek um, and that's going to be our last like midweek in this um, our like men's women's cycle so we'll have a new cycle starting in June so look out for that we'll have that announcement coming out this Wednesday as well um, and then next Wednesday we're gonna have our summer kickoff party Woo! which will yes. be really fun it's gonna be superhero themed so come dressed as a superhero your favorite superhero whatever there's going to be food, fun, and games there, and it'll be at 7 p.m. normal Wednesday night time. Then this Friday, May 28th, we're going to have a devotional here at the church building for Campus Blueprint and Teens, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. And then one last thing, um, definitely just be praying for Miss Joanne. She, was, she wanted to come out to service today, but she had a, a bad fall yesterday. So keep her in your prayers, and then Kara also has an announcement for us guys I, I just I'm excited to introduce to you our new book ministry uh, it's been on Boone Eyes heart you know to have this ministry we've benefited from so many books you know that has helped us with our marriage parenting uh, and deepen our convictions over the years so I have a scripture I just want to read to you uh, in Ephesians 4 verse 7 it says but to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it then in 11 through 13, it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So God clearly gave gifts to build us up and to mature God's people. And the church leadership wanted to make these resources and teachings easily available to us. And so, you know, as the teachers in these books, they guide us on how to understand the scriptures in context and grasp deeper meanings of God's word and to grasp insights into God's heart. And I know that was, it was so encouraging just to hear the message about us wanting to seek God. That is, should be our heart. 
And so we have all these resources to do that. just want to encourage you. So some of these teachings and some of the books, just to give you an idea, are on the Old and New Testament. Also, so there are books on mental health, apologetics, God's kingdom and forgiveness, humility, marriage, parenting. And also there's a lot of great resources for devotionals for uh, you know your kids that you can have for your family. So I just want to encourage you guys. It's at, the book is at cost. We're not making any profit at this. Uh, but I just want to encourage you to invest in that. I know it's really helped Lou and I over the years. And so anyway, I'll, I'll be in the foyer after church every Sunday. So if you're interested, come and take a look at the book table. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to have one closing song. And we haven't done this one in a while. Uh, it was kind of hard to do during the pandemic when it was just Josh and I up here. Um, so uh, <laughs> this one's called Master and Savior. Jesus is my Lord, my Master and Savior. Jesus is my Lord, my Master and Savior. Jesus is my Lord, my Master and Savior. Now and forevermore, hallelujah. Now and forevermore. Praise you, Jesus, Son of God, and the blood of the Lamb. King of kings and Lord of lords, God of Abraham, hallelujah, God of Abraham. Jesus is the one who delivers me daily. Jesus is the one who delivers me daily. Jesus is the one who delivers me daily. From my sin and shame, hallelujah, from my sin and shame. Praise you, Jesus, Son of God, and the blood of the Lamb. King of kings and Lord of lords, God of Abraham, hallelujah, God of Abraham. Come with us now, blessed Holy Spirit. Come with us now, blessed Holy Spirit. Come and fill us now, blessed Holy Spirit. With your love and power, hallelujah, with your love and power. I'll praise you, Jesus, Son of God, and the blood of the Lamb. King of kings and Lord of lords, God of Abraham, hallelujah, God of Abraham. I'll praise you, Jesus, Son of God, and the blood of the Lamb. And Lord of Lords, God of Abraham, hallelujah, God of Abraham. Praise you, Jesus, Son of God, and the blood of the Lamb, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God of Abraham, hallelujah, God of Abraham. Amen. We are dismissed for fellowship.